The great artist and teacher, Annie Albers, taught us that by focusing on the fundamentals of material and process, great things can be accomplished. She used only threads to create some of her most enduring and beautiful artworks. Hello, I'm Fritz Horstman from the Albers Foundation. Today, we're going to make a card loom and then use it to create a small weaving. Though there are many varieties of looms that range in size from something as small as your hand to something as big as a warehouse, the basic technology is always the same, the same as it has been for thousands of years. In its simplest form, a weaving is a flat, flexible object made up of vertical threads that are interlaced with horizontal threads. Now, if that doesn't quite make sense yet, don't worry, it will once we get started. We should establish a few basic terms which may help us to understand the process. The vertical threads are called the warp, while the horizontal threads are called the weft. You can see that the weft in this drawing goes under and over and under and over the warp, and then turns around and does the opposite on the way back. To get started, we need some yarn or thick thread, some yarn or thread that doesn't have so much flex in it, scissors, and a piece of cardboard. And this is what we'll actually build the loom on. You can use any size cardboard that you have available. Um, in this video, I'm just going to use uh, this small cardboard loom, uh, and I'll only be using my fingers to manipulate it. Later, I'm going to make a second video with a slightly larger piece of cardboard, and I'll use a slightly more complicated technique to work on that one. But for now, we'll, we'll just cover the basics with this one, and let's get started. The first thing we'll need to do is wrap our thread around our card in order to make the warp. So you can see that I have cut little slits in the top and bottom of my cardboard using my scissors. Um, so you can see that I just went through and did it just like this. The spacing of those is up to you. You'll want them no thinner than your finger because you're, you're going to want to be able to get through each thread. So then tie just a simple overhand knot at the end of your thread and we will thread that through the first slit there and then pull that knot up against the back of it. Of course, I could pull that out if I pulled very hard, but I won't be doing that. And then I'm simply going to go down to the bottom and go through that slit and then around the back and through the top slit again and repeating that. And you don't want it to be too tight here because you're gonna to need to be able to get your fingers in there. Um, so a little bit of flexibility and if it's a little loose, that's okay. And then when you get to the end, there's a few things you can do. You could, either way, you're gonna cut it off. And you could just tie a, a knot here, same as you did up there, or you can, you could use a piece of tape to finish it, or you can tie the two of them together. It's totally up to you. This doesn't matter a whole lot. Okay, now let's get going. So first I need to get a section of yarn to work with, and just a few arms length should be okay to start. You can add more if we need, and I cut that off. Okay, now, so finding my end here, I'm going to go under and over and under and over and under and over and under and over, and then I'm gonna turn around and come back and do the opposite. So, go under and over and under and over and under and over and under and over and under. Okay, we've made our first pass through. I'm gonna pull the yarn through until there's just a little bit left here, what we call a tail. 
and you can leave that tail hanging off. Or what I'm going to do is weave it back in above this line, um, but doing the opposite. So where here, I went under and over and under and over. I'm gonna go over and under and over and under and just tuck this in like so. Once I've gone through a few more passes, this will be more or less invisible. Okay, now we need to make our next pass through. So here, the last time I went through, I went under. So I need to turn the corner here and go over this time. So I'm gonna grab, so I've got just enough space that I'll make it all the way through. I went over, then under, then over, then under. So over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. Okay, and pulling this through now. Okay, we've made our second pass. And I push this down. So you can see that the tail is more or less starting to disappear already. And it will continue to do that as I go. So I'm just gonna continue now. This last time through, I went over here. And so I'm going to turn the corner and go under. So again, enough extra space there. Okay, and pull this through. Okay, so starting to build up my weaving and you probably have spotted the pattern here, but so the last time I went through the last one I went under. So I'll need to go over and then under as I come back the next time through. If I make the mistake, which I have certainly done, it happens all the time, that I go the wrong order, as in instead of going over and under, I accidentally go under over. You can see how that's confusing. Let's just see what happens if I, if I do that for a whole pass through. So I went under and over and under and over and over. Under and over and under and over. Okay, so you've probably spotted that I just did the wrong thing because I did the wrong order. And what happens is I've just pulled out my last row. And that can be very frustrating, but it's not the worst thing in the world. And if you've noticed that you made a mistake a few lines before, this is how you go back and fix it. But if it happens accidentally, no big deal. You just start over and look where you are. And so you say this last time ended going over. So when I come back, I'm gonna go under. Under, over, under, over. So I've got just a little bit left here, and but I, I haven't gone quite as far as I want to go yet. So I'm going to show you how you can extend this um, using just more of the same yarn, or if you wanted to change colors, you could. So I'm going to weave this back through. It looks like I've got a little bit more than one pass left to go. It's just a little bit. So now I've got this tail again. And just like before, I'm going to weave it in and just let it sit there, knowing that I'm going to come back over it, which will make it just blend into the weaving. Okay, so it's just sitting there just like that. Something you might have noticed in that last clip was that occasionally my edges started to pull in a little bit like this. And that might be just because I'm pulling this a little bit too hard. So that's something to watch for. If you do pull it a little too hard, you can just pull it back nice thing about weaving is that there's forgiveness in it. Um, okay, so now I'd like to add a little bit more yarn because I want to add a little more space here and I think I can make the whole weaving just a little bit bigger. 
So all I do is get another section of yarn. And of course you could use another color if you wanted to. I'm gonna stay with this. And I begin just like before. Um, and off we go. All right, I've got a nice square of fabric here that I've woven and I want to finish it now. So I've got a little bit of extra yarn here. I'm gonna cut this around here again. So I've just got a little tail and just like I did at the beginning, except now I need to do it in reverse, I'm going to weave this tail back in. If I was to do it over the top here, then it would probably easily come out. So what I'm gonna do is pull this last row forward a little bit and if you're working with a young child, this might be something that the adult needs to do. Um, I'm going to now go back into this area over and under and over and under because this last one was under over. Okay, so over and under and over and under and that should do it. And I'll push this all down. Okay, so now we have finished the weaving. We now need to get it off of the card loom. And to, to do that, if you remember from our backside, all we need to do is go through and cut all of these. Okay. And they're being held in place still because uh, the thread is held in these slits. Um, and I'm gonna just pull two of these at a time and I'm gonna tie them together using a simple overhand knot. Okay, just like this. And pull it, I don't wanna to pull too tight. If I pull too tight, it'll scrunch the whole thing up. And I'm going to double that so that the weaving won't come apart. Okay, and then I take the next two and do the same thing. So we've got our ends cut and now it's time to finish the whole thing. If you want, you can leave it just as it is. If you like these long tassels, I think the whole thing looks a little bit like a spider right now. That's, that's nice also, but I think that I'm going to cut these tassels off. And so I can cut just as close as I want. Okay, very nearly done. I see that a few of my tails are dangling here a little bit, so I'm going to just give those a snip. Okay. All right. We finished our first weaving. Look at that. Using just this yarn and thread, and of course the piece of cardboard on which we made the card loom, we created this small square weaving. So now it's your turn. See what you can do. Thanks for watching.